So let's dig deeper into statin drugs, what they do, why they're prescribed, side effects, evidence of benefits, evidence of risks, and go deeper down this rabbit hole. I've essentially given my overarching framing rant at this point, but I wanted to go further down this and give you guys more detailed evidence of what's going on here. So let's look at what statins do. Statins are HMG CoA reductase inhibitors. This is an enzyme in something called the mevalonate pathway. And it starts with acetyl CoA. You see HMG CoA here, goes to mevalonate. HMG CoA reductase, statins do that. Now, downstream of mevalonate are a lot of intermediates with fancy names that I was never taught about in medical school. Isopentanyl, pyrophosphate, hmm, geraniol pyrophosphate, farnesyl pyrophosphate, squalene, and then a number of other steps to make cholesterol. It's important to note that cholesterol itself is a steroid molecule. It is a ring structure, not a fatty acid. Fatty acids in the form of triglycerides and cholesterol, a ring structure that is a precursor for the critical hormones in your body, are packaged into an LDL bus containing an ApoB particle, ApoB100, specifically on the surface as a tag. It's a bus with a little tag on the window that says ApoB100. It has other apolipoproteins on it also that identifies it as an LDL particle. So statins interrupt that piece of human biochemistry. From the outset, we must ask ourselves, is that human piece of biochemistry important? <laughs> of course it is. There are other things made in the mevalonate pathway downstream from mevalonate that are critical for human health beyond cholesterol. But what I was taught about in medical school was just one, coenzyme Q10. I'll come back to that. The teaching that I got, both as a PA, a physician assistant in cardiology, in which I worked for four years before I went back to medical school at the University of Arizona, was if you give someone a statin and they get the major side effect, which is muscle aches, myalgias, just give them a coenzyme Q10 supplement. Well, what about all of the other things that are made downstream in the mevalonic pathway, like dolacol, which is critical for insulin receptor function because of these caviole, these cholesterol-rich lipid rafts in cell membranes in which the insulin receptor sits? How do I supplement them with dolacol? What about isopentanyl pyrophosphate, something that is required for selenoproteins like glutathione peroxidase, like thyroidoxin reductase, critical proteins to manage the oxidative reductive state of the human body, and critical proteins involved in the conversion of vitamin K1 to vitamin K2. These are important things that have to do with our endothelial health as well. How can we ignore all of that when we give someone a statin? We can't fix that with just coenzyme Q10. If you're on a statin and you're taking coenzyme Q10, that's way ahead of what most people are. Where do you get coenzyme Q10 normally? Meat, Organs, especially heart, is very rich in coenzyme Q10. So there are many downstream products of cholesterol synthesis in the mevalonate pathway. This is a different depiction of the mevalonate pathway that shows you these things that are ignored in Western medicine, but probably have critical roles in the human body. Let's look, acetyl-CoA, HMG-CoA, mevalonate, HMG-CoA reductase, farnesyl pyrophosphate goes to ubiquinone, that is coenzyme Q10. Dolacol, uh, protein synthesis, and the brain also involved in the insulin receptor functioning in caviole, which are certain parts of the cell membrane, uh, cholesterol, and other important selenoprotein intermediates involving thyroidoxin reductase, glutathione peroxidase, the formation of vitamin K2 from K1. I'll show you more about that later in the podcast, but we are not taught about this in medical school. I was never taught to think about all of these critical downstream intermediates of a really important biochemical pathway. So more than anything with this podcast, with what I do in general, whether it's Instagram Reels, TikTok, whatever, I want to teach you how to think for yourself. Many of you, if you're here, already know how to do that well. I wanna challenge you to be curious about different things. Something that I was never challenged to think about in medical school that I've thought about a lot since medical school and residency was the human body has pretty elegant cascades of biochemistry, nutritional, biosynthesis. Are we really wise to go interrupting those with medications? Do we really wanna do this? I would say no. Do we really believe that a particle like LDL, LD, low density lipoprotein is actually killing humans? 
uh, when it has critical roles in the human body, which I'll show you in a moment, that are also not taught in medical school? I don't think so. I don't believe that the human body was designed broken. Yes, there are a small number of people who sadly suffer genetic polymorphisms in utero and are born with genetic defects and are born with genetic challenges, but the majority of us are not in that state. The majority of us are reasonably well outfitted genetically from a biochemical standpoint and are going to determine our individual health, longevity, and quality of life based on what we eat. When I was in medical school, when I was working as a PA, when I practiced in residency and after, med and after residency, I was never challenged to ask patients what they thought was causing their illness. But what we always do is we give patients this get out of jail free card that says, this is a genetic problem. I have a genetic predisposition to heart disease. I have a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol. I have a genetic predisposition to thyroid issues. I have a genetic predisposition to high blood pressure. Therefore, there's nothing I can do about this. When in fact, I think this is the greatest lie that is being told within Western medicine today. We are cheating our patients and ourselves and our families out of the possibility of changing our lives positively by making lifestyle changes. Unless we do research that is aimed at understanding what the optimal human diet is, and believe me, we're trying to get that research going with the Animal-Based Nutrition Research Foundation. You can find it at abnrf.org. We're working on a pilot study now with Stefan Van Vliet at Utah State University. Details are at abnrf.org. Unless we do that type of research, I don't think we will know how to equip physicians with dietary and nutritional recommendations. 